I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Your gut is the gastrointestinal system, which includes your stomach, intestines, and colon. It absorbs and digests all the nutrients from the food that you eat. Joining us to talk about ways to maintain a healthy gut is Dr. Catherine Urbina, an internist with the Scripps Coastal Medical Group in San Diego, California. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So go into a little bit more detail. Talk about the gut. How does it absorb and process? Yeah, so when we say gut, um, it's kind of a general term. Usually what we're talking about is the GI tract. So everyone has one. You know, it starts all the way from the mouth. We go down into the esophagus, which carries the food down to the stomach. Uh, the stomach is kind of what's breaking down the food that we just took in. Then we go into the small intestine and the and, and the large intestine. So that those two, the small and the large intestine is the colon. And that's really where we're starting to um, actually absorb the food that we take in. So the first part's really breaking down stuff and the second part is absorbing it. So how do you maintain a healthy gut? There's a lot of processes that go into it. Um, generally speaking, the first, the easiest thing that we can focus on is diet, because um, what we're taking in on a day-to-day -day basis is what's being broken down and then absorbed into the rest of the body. Um, so really maintaining a healthy gut, that kind of term is maintaining a healthy microbiome. So what is the healthy microbiome? We hear that term a lot lately. And really what it is, is there's tons and tons of bacteria and viruses and fungi that are throughout that GI tract, and we actually rely on them. So we actually want to maintain some healthy bacteria going on. Um, they actually help us break down food and help us absorb food that we couldn't do on our own. So it's trying to keep that balance of actually keeping that really good bacteria in, and it helps keep um, the absorption process healthy and also helps with our metabolism too. So it helps with sugar, helps with cholesterol manage management. So we actually want to fuel that healthy bacteria because um, it also helps us too. So you reference good bacteria, bad bacteria. Can you explain the difference? So a lot of times we think of bacteria, we think of something bad. Sometimes if we have an overgrowth of one type of bacteria that's either inflammatory or can break down the skin, that would be like an infection that we want to treat. But actually we've got good bacteria that's on the surface of our skin and inside of our body um, that, can, that kind of relies on us and we actually rely on it as well. And then talk about the, uh, the gut microbiome. Yeah, so the gut microbiome is all of that, you know, bacteria that is all throughout the GI tract, and there's thousands of different types, and they can actually help, you know, break down food and help us absorb food as well. So it's, and, and they actually rely on us as well to, to feed them. So it really is a balance between the two, and we want to try to keep the healthy bacteria in, and we like, it's kind of like your own ecosystem in the GI tract. So what foods promote good health? There's a couple different categories we want to think of. We want to think of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains slash fiber foods. So good fruits would be uh, berries. Berries are great. You know, bananas, apples, and then vegetables. We really like some fresh vegetables. So, you know, broccoli, asparagus, any sort of leafy green would be great. Um, and then getting in some whole grains as well. Lots and lots of fiber. And what, what would constitute fiber? What would that be? So high fiber foods would include whole grains, steel cut oats. So if we go for, you know, whole grain toast or making your own oats in the morning rather than leaning towards maybe the prepackaged stuff. And what foods should you be avoiding? So we try to avoid foods that's, you know, prepackaged, um, lots of chemicals, high shelf life foods, fast foods. So even though they're really easy to get in the moment and they last for a long time in the pantry, a lot of times they don't really promote a really good healthy microbiome. So basically you're leaning more towards the fresh foods. Yes, definitely the fresher, the better when it comes to keeping a healthy and stable gut health. And I think a lot of people can feel that, you know, when you, when, even though it's easy in the moment, when you don't eat very well, I think a lot of times we just don't feel quite right. That's your microbiome telling you that it's not actually in a good balanced state. What are prebiotics and probiotics? Prebiotics, I think about it, the food and the nutrients that you're taking in to feed that healthy gut that's already there. So once again, it's going to be our fruits, it's going to be our vegetables, it's going to be our whole grains. So it's the nutrients they need to survive versus probiotics are going to be you taking in um, the microbiome that was already made and you're introducing it to the body. So for instance, that might be like yogurts that have, you know, that healthy bacteria in it. Um, kefir is a great example, sourdough. So they already actually have some healthy bacteria that you're actually introducing and hoping that it, it, it maintains once you eat it to so keeping that in the gut. According to the National Institutes of Health, um, up to 70 million people are affected by digestive diseases. 
when your gut is not healthy, what can happen? We're actually expanding this research as we're finding out that the gut doesn't only affect the GI tract, it actually can affect a lot of other things. So the, the gut is, I think of it kind of the first line of defense of absorbing sugars and cholesterol. So if you've got a good defense going on, it can actually stop you absorbing some of those unhealthy fats that can make, you know, have high cholesterol and heart disease. It can also stop some of the really high sugars from being absorbed that could lead to processes like type two diabetes. So if you've got a good balance in the gut, it can actually stop some of these chronic conditions from happening. We're finding it even affects stuff like your mood, your mental health too. So what are some of these digestive diseases? There can be digestive diseases all throughout the GI tract, especially if there's an imbalance in that microbiome. So up farther up in the GI tract, you can be getting acid reflux, you know, feeling nauseous after we eat. We can get, get be getting inflammation of the gallbladder, sometimes gallstones. You might have to get your gallbladder taken out. And then it can also affect uh, farther down in the GI tract. You can get inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. And sometimes just generally people don't feel very well. You know, you can be bloated or distension or there can be uh, changes to your bowel habits in general. And you referenced it uh, a second ago with regard to type 2 diabetes. Um, talk about gut bacteria and obesity. There's lots of processes that play into this, but we're really trying to keep that healthy, you know, guard of defense and keep a healthy uh, gut bacteria so that you actually can stop the absorption of really high sugar. So even though, you know, you might decide to not have a healthy meal, which is okay, we like to have some balance. If we've got some good bacteria going on, it can actually be your line of defense. So it can stop that high sugar from going in into your body so that you don't get as much of an insulin spike. And when we have high insulin, we store onto fat. So if we can stop that process from the beginning, healthy gut bacteria, don't get as much sugar being absorbed and we, we don't have to have that high insulin. What can you do to promote a healthy gut in the short term and the long term? I would say, generally speaking, what you're doing in the short term is actually going to help you in the long term. I think consistency is key no matter what. So I would say, of course, food is a big um, is a big thing, as we've touched on today, but just making sure we're getting in fresh foods, high fiber foods. Um, and I would say long term, trying to make sustainable changes. So if you're somebody that maybe you don't cook a lot of your own food or it's not something we've really thought about, I would say just try picking one meal a day. Maybe we say breakfast, we're gonna try to have be a little bit more fresh. We're gonna get in fiber, we're gonna get in fresh foods. And maybe just have that be your change for about a month or two, and then it becomes habit. And then maybe next month we try to have a healthier snack come into play. And I find that long-term it's more sustainable to make little changes that we kind of stack on top of each other rather than trying to change everything at once. What are the long-term benefits of a healthy gut? So really, you know, it's going to help with a with a ton of different processes. So it's going to help uh, prevent those chronic conditions we talked about. So it can help with lowering cholesterol that lowers our chance of heart attacks and strokes. It can uh, lower our chance of that type two diabetes or prediabetes, lower our chance of um, having that kind of central unhealthy um, fat around like the midline section that can be um, also dangerous for our heart. And we're also finding that keeping a healthy uh, gut health can also help with mental health as well, like depression and anxiety. Any final thoughts, doctor? I would just say overall, just try to be mindful of this. So a lot of this does come from diet. That's actually something we can control. So remember, the fresher, the better and high fiber. So we want to be getting in berries, you know, apples, bananas. We want to be getting in those whole grains. So steel cut oats, you know, for someone that can do dairy, we tolerate that well doing our Greek yogurts. A good example, if we don't really know where to start, um, a, a kind of a good comprehensive diet would be the Mediterranean diet. Um, so that has a, that encompasses a lot of these foods that we talk talked about and just trying to stay away from a lot of the processed foods, the quick fast food, the quick, the quick grab and the high shelf like food. So trying to stay from away from the chemicals and the sugar if we can. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. If you want more information on how to maintain a healthy gut, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.